Stick Library. Welcome back. It's Pat Petrillo here. And uh, we're going to be covering some hand technique in this lesson. And I'm going to give you a general overview of my approach, my philosophy, how I use rebound, how I learn to use rebound. We're going to talk about some rudiment combinations. And in general, how I approach the hand uh, portion of my technique and how that directly applies to drum set. Uh, everything I do technique wise and on the pad, I don't, do, I don't approach it any differently than I play on the drum set. And that's the, the main point that I want to get across to you. So here's what we're going to talk about. First of all, uh, everything that you see here is demonstrated on Hands, Grooves, and Fills, my DVD and book that's available on this site. And also I'm using my signature practice pad, the P4, the Pat Petrillo P4. And um, the reason why I use this pad is because I have a bunch of different levels here and I can have fun and move around and, and kind of express myself just like I'm on a drum set. So here's a little bit about how I approach my technique. Um, I primarily play match grip. Uh, the main pivot point or the main grip point of the stick is the thumb, the index, and the middle finger. This is called your fulcrum. And many of you have heard this before with a lot of different lessons and a lot of different teachers showing you where this pivot point is. The pivot point of this stick is about a third of the ways. If you cut the stick into thirds, that's basically where you should be holding the stick. Not all the way up here and not all the way back here. Basically a third of the way up the stick. And what I do is use this pivot point as the basis of all my playing. That stick is going to hinge right here between your thumb, your index, and primarily your middle finger. So that stick can really move back and forth. Okay? So my whole technique is about as if I was dribbling a basketball. So if I dribble my basketball like this, I'm using forearm, I'm using wrist, and everything is all connected and I'm moving in a rhythm, I'm moving in a time. I don't play with just the wrist or just the fingers. I use a little bit of everything. Okay, so to get that stick in motion, one of the things I like to do is just get these eighth notes bouncing like I'm dribbling a basketball. And I do it in the air. Before I even play on the drums, I try to get this pivot motion happening. I let that stick move, okay? I try not to over control the stick. So a nice little dribbling motion here, okay? And I do both hands together. So if we translate that to the pad, we got this. Okay, and then both hands together. Now whether I'm playing here or I'm playing down here, it's the same approach. I'm dribbling my stick. You can see as I get slower, I'm moving in time. I'm not using stick motions that are very jagged. I'm using a flowing fluid motion using the rebound. I'm reacting to the rebound of the stick. do both hands together. It's a very really good idea if you set up a mirror in front of yourself as you're practicing and you can watch your stick heights and make sure both hands are coming up exactly the same. And they should feel that way, like you're dribbling a basketball. The stick is coming back up at you. That's the first foundational uh, technique exercise and that's using the rebounds. So now let's take those eighth notes and let's alternate them and then they become a sixteenth note pattern like this. So as you can see, my hands are working the same, but they're now working in opposite directions. So the whole idea to create smooth 16th notes, or single stroke roll as it were, is to get the notes even. And in order to get the notes even, you have to break up the notes a little bit and make sure that you lead with both hands. To that end, here's an exercise right out of the book, and I call this 5-5-3. Five, five, We're going to be breaking the 16ths into five note groupings and three note groupings, okay? It goes like this.
So you can hear those phrasings. You can hear the five note groupings, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and the three note groupings, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's called five, five, three. Now you notice I'm not playing each note. I'm getting my sticks up, I'm getting a lift, I'm getting a fluid motion. And the second half is, and then we want to put two measures of 16th notes at the end. So the whole exercise goes like this. See the rebounds working. Okay, so let's move that exercise around the pad and you're going to get a really good feel as if you're moving around the drum set. So you can see I'm using constant rebound, the stick is always in motion, and this exercise is great because it bounces the sixteenths between the hands back and forth. So ultimately you should get nice smooth sounding sixteenth notes, okay? So those are nice, relaxed, smooth, full stroke rebounds. Now let's talk about another concept, and that's the what I call the whip drop. Uh, it's based on the molar technique, but I don't like to call it the molar technique because there's many different approaches I think that people misunderstand what molar is all about. So I just call it a whip and a drop. And basically, the way I approach it is like this. Um, I start in this position, and when I want an accent, I leave my stick down. And I whip from the forearm, and I relax my wrist, and I let the stick just kind of whip down into the pad. Okay. Now you can see that I don't do an exaggerated motion. I don't do this kind of thing. That you may see a lot of explanation of what molar is. Basically, uh, for me, that's like walking around the block to go next door. You don't really need to go through all those motions. All you need to do is lift right from your elbow. Because that's the way your arm moves. Straight up and down. Closest distance between two points is a straight line. Okay. So there's the whip. Now let's add the drop. And basically, it's all the same motion. All we're going to do is drop the note right before it on the way up. Watch. And one. It's like taking a breath. And one. And one. Now let's tie it together. And one. And two. And three. And four. Okay, after that accent, I keep that note down. Now, whether it's a two note grouping or a three note grouping or a four note grouping, I do it the same way. Okay, so that's one of the exercises from the book. And basically, what you could do is get that faster, that whip still maintains.
you'll notice that as soon as they accent, I hold the notes down and I let them bounce. Let's use that same whip concept and put it in with 16th notes. So we go back to our rebound strokes. Now this is whip and accent on the one. Okay, everything's staying down here. Now let's do some multiple combinations of 16th notes. That means we're going to pop accents off on the other hand, alternating. Watch this. Two whips. Now that concept maintains through any kind of accent pattern that you choose to play, for example. So you can see those turn into B sextuplets, but that whip and that drop still maintains. Now what I'm not doing is pulling on my fingers at all. I'm basically letting my fingers act as a shock absorber, just kind of letting that stick hit off my back fingers. Okay, so now what you can do is pop those accents around the drums, or in this case, move it around the pad. Okay, so that's the whip and the drop. So we have the rebounds, we have accents, and that's really good for grooving too with accents and ghost notes. So now, we put that together with the same kind of phrasing with paradiddles, double paradiddles, and paradiddle diddles. Those are the big three diddle rudiments you need to learn. So we got paradiddles, double paradiddles. paradiddle diddles and lead with the other hand. So I have numerous exercises that I can show you basically here's what we can do. We can do paradiddle, paradiddle, double paradiddle, 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 double paradiddle and that goes like this. You notice that whip and the diddles are nice and low, okay? Let's add paradiddle diddles into the mix. That last one was paradiddle diddle, double paradiddle, paradiddle diddle, double paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. It's a great exercise for working the diddles because it alternates hands. And let's pop some accents up on the pad.
So it's great for your coordination, and that's the kind of thing that you would end up doing on the drum set, popping those accents up on the drums while you keep your diddles nice and soft. Moving on a little bit more, let's talk about rolls. So what I do with my open rolls is I try to get two even bounces. I let the stick rebound up, I push it down in that motion, I do not do any finger pull outs or anything like that. I try to get two even and equal bounces. That being said, nobody's rolls are perfect. The whole idea of a roll is not to sound like a machine gun, where both notes are exactly the same. An open roll should have some, some air underneath it. It should have some smoothness to it. It should pretty much just float. So to use rebound and to use forearm is a very natural thing to do. So to that end, we're going to do a 16th note pattern and add some rolls, like this. Now that's an exercise I learned a long time ago when I was a kid, and I think that exercise serves me very well today, just like it did a long time ago. You can lead it off of the other hand as well. And so now let's try that a little bit faster. Notice that my hand motion maintains, and I'm just dropping those rolls in there, trying to get a nice, smooth, open sound. Here we go. Softer. Softer. So you can see my approach does not change when I get softer to when I get louder. Okay, so those are the big, I say, the, the largest uh, rudiment group to learn. The single strokes, the paradiddles uh, family, and the rolls. The other family that you can do is the flams. Now let's talk a little bit about that. And we have that whip drop motion. And if you alternate those, you have your flams. Each hand is doing a whip drop motion, but working opposite. You can see that, that motion, a constant flow that I'm trying to do. I'm not doing this. Okay, so what I like to practice is quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and sixteenth notes as flams. Here we go. And you can see what that is all about is a nice fluid rebound motion. And if I was gripping the stick too tight, I wouldn't be able to play those flams that quickly. Okay, so I think the whole thing that you have to remember is rebound is the key. Uh, let the stick come back up to you and move in a time frame that's conducive to a smooth rebound. Work on accents, the whip and the drop. Work on your rolls and learn all three diddles. And uh, that's really important because then you can start putting rudiments and combinations together. So uh, hopefully this has helped you out. And uh, one last thing I'll leave you with is a little stick trick thing that many people ask me about and how to do. And uh, here's a little something for you, traditional grip, which I generally don't use too much. But let's see if I can remember how to do this stuff. See you next time, Stick Library.